Why are you all here at 12 o'clock in the morning? Oughtn't you be at school? No, don't go to school. Have you finished school? Yeah. Have you a job? No. Are you looking for one? Yeah. Any chance of one? No. Have you left school? No. Why aren't you at school? We only go in the after dinner. There's no school in the morning. You mean you're going to attack? Yeah. Are oh, you going to the tech? Yeah. What are you going to be? I don't know. How about you? I go to the tech as well. You do, yeah. And you? I go to school. And why aren't you at school now? My mum kept me home this morning. Why? I really slept it out. You slept it out until it's Friday? Yeah. What about a job? I'm looking for one. That's what? Um. Like what? A messenger boy. What about you? I'm not, uh, working. Hmm? I, uh, I'm looking for a job. You're looking for a job? Yeah. As? Okay, as long as I get a job. Now, what's it like living down here? You can do any amount of things in the flats. Once you have friends, you're okay. Once you've got friends, you're okay. Don't we all say that? Does it mean any more when said by children who live in the heart of the city of Dublin, in the streets behind the docks in the parish of St. Lawrence O'Toole? Children who are hemmed in and seldom see further than the funnels of the ships in the docks so near the blocks of flats in which they live. Flats like Sheriff Street, less than 20 years old, but already a ghetto. If a woman can't drag a pram up the stairs, she can put it in the ugly, obtrusive pram sheds, which look like the afterthought of an architect who had forgotten about babies. You can admire your neighbour's washing, since there aren't any flowers to look at, and nobody thought of putting a laundry in the basement. A little barbed wire never did children any harm. Besides, kids are kids, and it would take more than barbed wire to damp them down. There's a lot of washing in the flats, and an awful lot of children, 2,500 of them, shared between the 560 families and the three blocks of corporation flats that make up the Sheriff Street complex. There is a playground, a very inadequate one, and in any case, the big ones playing football drive the little ones out. And besides, it's only open when somebody is on duty. The flats are what they are because of where they are in a cramped triangular site right in the centre of industrial Dublin. Sheriff Street itself is wide and busy, a main artery straight down to the docks, carrying a stream of heavy lorries and container trucks. Sheriff Street Bridge spans a stretch of water called Spencer Dock, and nearby too is the railway. All this is irresistible temptation to children, bored by the empty concrete of the flats. I go see in the hills. Can you still go in there? Yeah. But uh, and it, are you let in there now? No, in the night time you have a security. What, during in the, the day? Are, are you still going in and playing around that dock? Yeah. yeah. You get fed up at the playground and uh, there's more open space in there. And uh, you can do what you like in there. You know, you're not afraid of breaking windows or anything with a ball or anything like that. And there's plenty of open space. It's just gone to waste. You just left there. There's no, nowhere else to play because if you go out on the road, you get a bang of a car. And if you're missing it here, you get fed up all day. And you can't stay in the flats all day. When you're playing football or something in the flat, they say they, all the women start giving up because you're breaking a window or something. There have been a number of drownings at the disused dock involving children from the flats. CIE are legally responsible for Spencer Dock, and they say they have no statutory power to fill it in, since a number of firms still draw water from it. Since the drowning started, CIE have built walls and improved fencing. They have removed barges and bollards which attracted the children and during the summer they employ a full-time watchman. But all that is little consolation to Mrs. Bernadette Dennis, whose son Georgie was drowned in Spencer Dock. Well, he, he was after being in school that day, and when his school was over, he just came up and left in his bag and went down to play. And he came up then and had his tea, and he went down to play again, and next about half six, the children kept blowing that he was in the water. And I looked out the window, and I seen the crowds just run, rolling up saying it was my lad. We were just down there throwing bricks into the water and uh, 
Georgie told me to go over to the moss bank and I went over for rocks and I came back and I just seen bubbles coming up. And then this lad, Joseph, he, he fell off the roof here about four years ago and he's got has psoriasis since. He broke out with an airbrush since. Mrs. Dennis's troubles have not come to an end. Since we filmed this interview, her six-year-old son, Gerard, was hit by a car in Sheriff Street. He was chasing a toy which another child threw out into the traffic. Fortunately, Gerard suffered from no more than shock and was discharged from hospital after a few hours. Accidents like that happen in Sheriff Street. Ever since my mind has been a hell to me here with the other younger children, Anything outside the flats is inviting. A watchman's fire, a passing lorry, a dangerous dock. There are small patches of trampled grass here and there among the flats, but the children are not allowed to use them. Instead, they are provided with a concrete playground which has a few swings and a small pavilion in which two paid helpers do their best for a very few of the toddlers for several hours a day. In this inadequate environment, children turn to delinquency. When denied the opportunity for legitimate play, they assert their frustration by indulging in what we like to call antisocial behavior. If a child hasn't a proper place to throw a ball, he will throw a stone at a lamp bulb, or climb over a wall into waste ground, or into a yard, or into what the evening newspapers call Dublin's killer dock. Why you not look? Oh, looking for a look for a job. Look for a job. Hang yourself out the hang. Tie for you now. The master hangs now the wind. It does. It does hang me out. It does. When I was in there, the mask never hung, hung us out the window. We had a noisy mask. The Christmas is better than that. Christmas, Christmas is a slaughterhouse. It's not a slaughterhouse. It is a slaughterhouse. Yes. I got an hour Why do you think I left it? I know, because you didn't like it. Yeah. Mitching all the time. I wasn't mitching. Then, yeah, I I then I went to Rutland Street. Rutland Street. It's a dome. I know, they don't learn much, but it's good in there. It's not good. It is. It's a half a shed. Yeah, and the Christian Brothers is the best. And Rutland Street is the best. Just Christian play football. You get your books on our free. You can get your books free in Rutland Street, you but don't. you don't bring them home. You do. You bring them home in air school. I know. You give them back at the end of the year. We don't get them back. We don't. We keep them. Yes. We get, we get our copies and pencils and all free. You don't give any money. You're like, well, I always do. I always give you something. You don't give me something. I do give you, you something. Don't. You wouldn't give us the share of the year today, you guys think. Well, you didn't. If you got them, would you give me any? Yeah. You wouldn't. I would. You wouldn't. I, I know you, you but I know you. You had three for yourself. You wouldn't give them. I had three for myself. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Bobby take one out and forgot to give you? Yeah, they had three. That was mine. They had that five. Was, I only had three. Yeah, and I suppose the car was... I had Bobby gave me Yeah, yeah you were. I answered the car was after they got me tea. You were down the flats, No, right? I, I met you at the avenue. I said, I'm going up with me tea. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Yeah, I've seen you I've seen you later, too. You know what car we go? And you're supposed to give me back the gloves. You done a bong he didn't give me the gloves this morning. I gave him three bottles, Lennon. I two bottles, and Lennon. Yeah, I'm then. on about the three o'clock. Time to move now, time to make a journey somewhere. Get out of the flats anyway. Go up Sheriff Street. I'd like to get a job. Get a job. And in the messenger boy. If I got a job as a messenger boy, I'd take it. Messenger boy is no use <coughs> in the window. Well, you still have money in your pocket, haven't you? It's still good, I get the money. You like to, you could get so you can get a job there and go to another job. You could get some, you could go to tech and get some trade. We have nowhere else to go, just stay on the flats. But most of the time we play cards. We play day. cards in the flats. We send them on. From Sunday morning till about 10, till about 12, the broken prom sheds. And then after the dinner, we go to Peter's and then come home. The traffic down in Shell Street is very dangerous. Big oil lorries be coming in and big containers, and all through the night, big oil lorries going up down to the gates. Sometimes you go over Shell Street about half eleven and night, and all the kids jump on them. And they break the lights, and no kids get knocked over by it. Yeah, they're always breaking the lights. Do so you think? Do you think the kids are going to rob the lorry? Yeah. And there's a little box at the, and they press it, it changes the lights. They they just fly by, mm. and then when they get up to the bridge, they stop. And when the same as they see it, they see it coming to the mirror, when they look to the mirror, they fly, just go on, even if the light is red. Some of them get out and give you a box. And we were fishing down there one Sunday, me and two other fellas. And two young said, I went down, one young said, his brother, I went down there to look for me trade. And I was walking along the edge and I fell in. And another young lad put down his coat and pulled me up. 
was in, I went up to my the hospital. I fell in up there, trying to get a broad on this, fell down. And I came back up again, I fell right in by the head and he beat me. There's be hundreds of kids in there, all out of the storm flats and all down down here. And some of them don't know how to swim, they just come over a bit of mess. CIE chased the children away from the Spencer dock, and maybe no more children will be drowned, at least one hopes so. There was talk of making the dock into a swimming pool, but it would cost too much, it seems. And all those old railway engines CIE have up at their yards in Inchicore. One or two of them in the playground, an adventure playground. It might keep the children off the streets, prevent them getting killed, playing ball, scutting on lorries. Can't be helped, perhaps. A steady place to have flats anyway. It's no good putting more swings and things in the playground, they say. The kids would only smash them up. Demons they are. One woman who knows all about living in the flats is Mrs. Vera Kavanagh. When she was younger, she was a professional singer. She had 12 children and doesn't sing very much around the house now. Yes, a house, not a flat, a little house beside the flats. The Kavanaghs did have a flat on the third floor, but they moved after their son Nigel fell off the balcony. And then there was Leslie in the Spencer dock and little Brenda. What happened to Brenda? I remember it was on a Wednesday morning. I, had a, I was after having a new baby. She was four weeks old, Jacqueline. And I was bringing Jacqueline over to the welfare in Cheryl Street. And I left Brenda with Linda and Alan in the boys' playground to play. And I went in and they give free dinners to the mothers, you know, when they have new babies in the convent. Yes. And I was sitting down and a policeman come in and I didn't know what was wrong. He was whispering to the nun and I heard him telling the nun to keep me there. So I st still didn't know what was wrong. And I heard him saying something about Brenda, and on the minute I thought that, you see, she used to take epileptic fits. And I thought she'd have to take him one. What had happened? It was a coal lorry. It was after knocking her down, it was full of coal. So I did, I left the baby in the dinners and I ran out. And when I went out, I saw Father Freeney covering her up with a, a sack. So I don't remember much more. I went to hysterical and I was taken into the flats. How old was Brenda, Mr. Kavanagh? Three and a half. I had another little boy, Nigel. He was three. And he was playing on the balcony one Saturday evening. And we were in the house. I was just making the tea. after bathing him. And he was gone out to play on the balcony. And I heard Mrs. Whelan's grandson, Lord, and for Tommy, my husband. And when he ran out, he just looked over the balcony. And Nigel was lying on the ground. He ran down and he took him up and he called a passing car and he took him to Temple Street. Well, in Temple Street, the doctor rushed immediately with him in his own car up to the Richmond. And he remained unconscious for nine months. Nine months? He had a brain injury. And in nine months he died? He died in the rehabilitation centre in Dunleary after nine months. How long after Brenda dying was that? Um, three months. And then? In August, same year, two, I think six weeks after, Leslie went out that morning with Paul Bourne, another little boy in the flat. He hadn't come in for his dinner. And I thought he was up in my mother's house up in that lost a place. So it went to all day, and that evening, and my husband come in, I says to him, Leslie hasn't come in yet. He said, he may be up in your mother's. So he took the bike and he went up to the town and he wasn't there. And what had happened? Leslie had a, a cattle stick hunting the cattle at the bridge mm. and his stick fell into the water and he climbed over the bridge to get into the... just pull it out and he went back into the Spencer Jack. Three children in one family. Three of them, yeah. Killed by accident within yeah. three or four months. Three of them, yeah. A drowning motor accident. And one fell over the body. And one fell over the balcony. Nothing but balconies and bleakness in this environment. The flats are nice inside, very good flats in themselves. But Dublin Corporation's attitude was to provide the housing and let the amenities take care of themselves. But amenities don't take care of themselves. The corporation does employ social workers, not nearly enough of them. Girls like Noreen Carney. I think that possibly they match up 
uh, from the point of view of providing accommodation for families uh, fairly well, but from the point of view of ancillary services, they really are a, a pretty low standard. Uh, not just schools and uh, health clinics, but especially play facilities, the church. Well, this, these blocks here in Sheriff Street have been here for 20 years or so. Um, are you more satisfied with what's going up now, places like Ballymun? Oh yes, I, I think so. But even for a, a group of buildings which are only 20 years old, these seem to have been pretty poorly planned. I mean, as we look around us, uh, they're planned around a square, which looks to me as if it could make um, an ideal playground, instead of which uh, these clotheslines and coal sheds, etc., are put here. Uh, instead of being tucked instead away. Instead of being tucked away and marking that out into very reasonable playground and perhaps having some grass where the mothers can watch their children quite happily from here and they're safe from traffic and from any of the hazards which abound in this area. And what is the real function of, of play for children, particularly children living in a city environment like this? Um, I wouldn't even distinguish particularly for children in the city. I think play is an important part of development for any child and this hasn't been understood up to now. Um, it has been known that children need to be fed and their health should be looked after and that they need schooling. But play is as important a part of the development as any of these. Uh, in order to develop language, a child has to be taught to play, it has to learn to play. Now this can be done uh, in a home which has a garden and lots of other facilities quite easily in a natural sort of way. Where these um, aren't provided naturally and where there are other difficulties of um, small flats where the children are compelled, if you like, to go outside, big numbers of children. You have to provide this over and above where the family can produce themselves. The Sheriff Street children do escape the odd time, of course, off to the country in a minibus, off to a house in County Wicklow, up by the Wicklow Gap, a house owned by the Department of Lands and Forestry and made available through somebody's good offices and as a sort of contribution to conservation here, show the children of our nation the beauty of our nation. is Louis O'Neill. He's the playground supervisor of the Catholic Social Welfare Bureau, which runs a number of playgrounds for the corporation, including the Sheriff Street one. He brings as many boys or girls out to Oakwood and Wicklow as he can. He doesn't seem to mind working through his weekends. A lot of social workers are like that. Yeah, what do you think you've done here? Oh, yeah. What's the difference between this and Sheriff Street so fun? Ah, you, you can hear who's the sheep and all in here. You, you can play in the water and you can climb the trees and all. But did not miss all the lorries and cars? No. Mm. No. Hate them. Hate them now. Hate them. We like to see the, the, like the sheep that chase them. Yeah. And we like... And they're all rubber down like there, though. The, um, the they're nice up here. They like the food too. It's better than yeah. Sunday because yeah, we, we all can go out to the pictures and all. And we can go on the mountains every day. Hello, one of you at a time. What do you say? Well, oh. it's Sunday, all them go out to pictures in the flats and all. And you, and just some of the fellas that do be left by the long. And you won't be, we won't be able to go to the pictures now, so we like the, the weekend down here. Uh-huh. Because you can climb the trees, you can um, push the sheep, swing on the rope. What? And the house is nice. The and the wool off them. And what? When the house the sheep, you can get the wool off them. Get the wool off them? We do all of them. We call the sheep. And what about the farmers? Would they like that? Yeah, they, they, they let us use the sheep for them. The the asses would be good down with them to use the sheep. And but they, they had to stay out all, all day, day. So, so we said that would be a good idea. So you'd come back here again, would you? Yeah. And we like in the farm and we're going on the mountains. Hmm. They're only the great. The and we do all travelling on the, in the car. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Lovely views and all. Everything you Because there's no, no, no fun down in the flats. And just and just down down See, say, say, say if you let your bog out on the road and then you, you, you run out after you could get killed on the road. It's hard to believe, Louis, that there is such a place as Sheriff Street when we're down here and still it's only 35 miles away. You've worked in Sheriff Street a great deal. What are the major needs in a community like that one? 
Uh, one of the needs which I think a place like this can meet is the need to get out from it. Uh, I think we in Dublin uh, have missed out uh, on the fact that we have a, a most fantastic playground on our doorstep. Uh, and perhaps one of the big needs, for particularly for the children in Cheryl Street, is the opportunity to get out uh, as often as possible. When you're speaking of Cheryl Street, you're speaking of a dock area, a number of blocks of flats, uh, heavy traffic coming to and from the docks, the railway, a young population hemmed in, uh, all the dangers and the difficulties that go with living in a, an area such as this. Louis O'Neill doesn't yet know about a piece of good news we heard a few days ago. A landowner in Westmeath, Thomas Packenham, has offered to make available a house on his estate with 60 acres for use by children from Sheriff Street and other areas. Back in the area, Noreen Carney knows that a weekend in Wicklow is fine, but it doesn't go near solving the main problems. It is a question of finance, and I wonder if any of us are prepared to pay more rates and taxes in order that the corporation can provide better housing estates. It might be that land could be made available for the local tenants' associations to develop themselves, uh, and, and perhaps to be given complete um, uh, you know, authority to run their own areas, to have a sort of local authority in, in its literal sense. The local schools are overcrowded. The teachers in them fight against tremendous odds, huge classes, the apathy of parents, old buildings. But now there's a new kind of school for the Sheriff Street children in Liberty Hall every night. It's a tutorial session run by a young American named Joanne Murphy. She's helped by a roster of about 70 volunteers, most of them students. At Joanne's tutorials, there's an average ratio of only six pupils to each teacher. Joanne talks about her work with an intensity born of her American experience. The comparisons between the ghetto that is Sheriff Street and ghettos I have worked in in America were so evidently clear, the social and economic um, gaps that the children are suffering from, um, that I thought it was worthwhile trying to start off the tutorial program, giving the children the chance to have the same kind of relationship with the tutors uh, that I had found fruitful working in America. Your program means that the children come out of the ghetto, as you call it, and come up here to Liberty Hall in the evenings. Uh, to what extent do the local schools uh, approve of your program? Because they must feel it as, in some sense, reflecting on their inadequacies. I think they feel that it's um, a new idea, one that they haven't heard of before, one that they can't necessarily um, um, accept or cope with as yet. Um, I certainly would hope that we could reach the point of close cooperation with the schools because this would be the ideal situation for the children um, if we could have a good working relationship with the schools. Well, what do you hope to achieve in, in this program? I think it can basically be summed up that we want to break down the barriers for the children, um, we want to draw on their self-creativity, um, we want to give them the time that they can't have in schools that are hopelessly overcrowded um, and in homes that are hopelessly overcrowded as well. They need time and they need people to give them the time. Some of the tenants in Sheriff Street are giving time to a new tenants association. They are concerned about a wide range of problems, including that of the many children from the flats who appear in the courts. In the police force, there are a handful of policemen called junior liaison officers, whose job it is to keep such children out of the courts. We asked the commissioner of the Gardashir Corner for permission to interview the liaison officer for Sheriff Street. We were refused and told it was contrary to Gardashir Corner policy to build up a personality cult in the force. The Committee of the Tenants' Association is worried about how things are going in the flats. Because we have not got police protection in the first place. The police are afraid of them. Why myself go anywhere? are afraid. <coughs> a taxi man. A taxi man will not come into Sheriff Street at the moment. A young girl of 14 or 15 going for a job today, when she mentions Sheriff Street, she's, she, won't be, she won't be giving a job. I know people in this area have to give strange addresses for the, for the help of children to get jobs. And it's all the fault of the parish, because we haven't got the anointment of the men of the parish. Uh, they may be bold, but they're not all that bad. No, I you know. No, the kids... Oh, your children are not bold, no matter where you go. <laughs> they're, 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 cheek, they're cheeky. Well, yeah. you can't expect kids to be other, otherwise. But um, cheek, cheek won't kill us, and um, if we get our confidence, it's amazing how the, the, the cheek stops. How stop many case. meetings have you called since you formed the community centre? Of the people in the area? How many meetings have you called? Three. Three? Yeah. And other than 12, what are the total amount in the three meetings come to? 
Did it come to 40 people? Well, no, I agree with you there. But no. this is it, you so see. So the parent, it's the parent, 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 parent uh, control that we're concerned. If we could get the parents, we could solve the children. I'm concerned about these children from 4 to 12. At least get them on the straight road. What happens to the ones above that, uh, someone else will have to look after. But these mothers, um, if the mothers put out their hands and helped, things sh would be straightened out. And I can see it being straightened out if the mothers have come along, because the fathers didn't seem to come along. Overcrowding, no social centres, and extremely limited play facilities lead to vandalism and delinquency. The children are forced to play on the streets and are killed by the traffic. They are forced to play around Spencer Dock, which CIE says it cannot fill in, and they get drowned. Their emotional development is stunted. We asked Dublin Corporation had they any plans to improve play facilities in the flats. They told us they had no plans at the moment, but were open to suggestions. We, in report, offer this program to them as a suggestion and as a stimulus to their imagination and to their humanity.